Nearly 200 Palestinian prisoners in Israeli jails have launched an open-ended hunger strike in protest against their detention without trial. The hunger strike is taking place in Ofer, Megiddo, and Negev prisons. Palestinian authorities say the prisoners have insisted that they would continue the strike until they are released. A lawyer who visited the Ofer prison said 55 prisoners at the facility have been isolated from other prisoners following the announcement of the strike. The hunger strike comes after Israel broke its promise and failed to release a fourth group of Palestinian detainees. Tel Aviv has come under fire for its detention policies that enable it to keep Palestinians behind bars without trial. We're going to cross over to Berkeley now. Joining us via Skype is Paul LaRudy, co-founder of the Free Palestine Movement. Many thanks for joining us here on Press TV, Mr. LaRudy. Now, first of all, what do you make of this hunger strike? The, the, the tool of a hunger strike has been used in the past between a pal by Palestinian prisoners as well. Uh, some have uh, eventually uh, been released. Do you think this way uh, is appropriate to bring the international community to action towards the policies of Israel? I wish I could be optimistic about a hunger strike and uh, what it can produce. Uh, hunger strikes have been referred to by uh, members of Congress and members of the American government in the past, but never in the cases of Palestinians. They've been used to uh, justify um, tactics in in places where the United States uh, considers important, like China and uh, and others. But uh, in the case of Palestine, we've had hundreds of prisoners uh, on hunger strikes, and and nobody seems to take notice here. I, I'm very concerned that uh, it will have very little effect because it won't be reported except by press TV. Right, but uh, the course of uh, a hunger strike, doesn't it show the level of a desperation and, and sort of give us a snippet into what the situation must be like uh, for these prisoners to be resorting to this measure? Absolutely. Um, the situation for Palestinian prisoners is really desperate. Those who are have not been convicted and do not ha and sentenced have no idea how long they're going to be in jail. Nobody tells them because their their admin so-called administrative t detention is indefinitely renewed, and the conditions are terrible. Uh, the uh, I I've been in Israeli jails uh, twice. And the conditions uh, of the prisons that I were in, was in were probably very nice compared to the conditions for Palestinian prisoners. But for example, against international law, uh, their families, if they live in Gaza, are not permitted to visit them. And it's, uh, it, it's very rare, in fact, for prisoners from uh, the, who come from the West Bank for their families to visit them. So. Um, they're very isolated. Well, speaking of isolation, there are those who do mention that now that uh, the Palestinian Authority has applied for membership and other UN uh, branches as well, there is reconciliation between Hamas and Fatah, uh, and there is international condemnation of the illegal settlements uh, being built by Israel. Do you think Israel is now being backed into a corner where it is basically acting out because of its own isolation? Um, I think Israel uh, recognizes that the world is not going to, most of the world is, is not going to uh, change its mind, and with, but that it doesn't matter. They, Israel has uh, a good part of the West and it has the United States uh, uh, backing it. And the votes in the United Nations are invariably the United States and Israel and a, a couple of Pacific Islands. Uh, against the rest of the world. So this is what they're counting on. And they really don't care what the rest of the world thinks. Okay. Paul LaRudy, co-founder of the Free Palestine Movement, joining us from Berkeley via Skype. Mr. LaRudy, thank you very much for your comments here on Press TV.